So I, I have my, the first movie I did was uh, the Saratov Approach. Uh, I, I produced the Saratov Approach, and I was the actor in it. I played other props, and that movie did really, really well. Um, and it, you know, it went had so many fans that went out and saw it. So I said, you know what? This was a great movie about these two missionaries, these two guys, and I thought. What is kind of needed there is a story that really champions women. We had the one that really championed these two guys, these two missionaries, but you know we really needed something for the women of the church that really kind of like champions their story and uh, also shows kind of how amazing that young women's program is. And I had seen my mom. My mom was a camp director for years and years and years, and so she. Um, she would come. She'd prepare for like a year. She'd come back when she'd have these yeah, intricate. Yeah, she'd tell us all these funny stories about girls' camp that were funny but meaningful, and we could tell it was really special to her. So. So I said, "What do you think about me doing a movie about camp?" And she shook her head and said, "No, you." <laughs> she she was worried that you know what we wouldn't do it justice, or we would make fun of it, or you know we would we would just not treat it the right way. So. But I, I definitely said, you know, I, I want to do this the right way, and I, I got Claire, and I got um, I got a supporting team of some amazing female producers, and they helped uh, come up with the story with me, and um, and so we had to make sure to get it right, and so we had a great team of women helping me because I've never been to camp, but I knew this thing, this story had to be told. Well, our tagline, we say it's based on thousands of true stories because we definitely, we, I definitely interviewed several women that had been to camp as a, as a youth and as an adult, and I just collected kind of all, I got my brain soaked in all these camp stories. But then what I wanted to do is, um, one thing that the Saratov approach achieved, it was able to speak to people that were outside of the Mormon faith. Um, it was able to be understood and enjoyed by people because it was such a human story. It didn't matter what religion you were, you could enjoy that. And I wanted to have that type of, that same element to this movie. So I said, what if we tell it through the eyes of a girl who's not a member of the church? A girl who is experiencing Mormonism for the first time through this camp. You know, she was raised Christian, but she somehow got thrown into this world. And everybody really, felt like that was a great idea because that way, if you're not a member of the Mormon church, you can see and understand it through her eyes because we, we hear her voice over, we hear her reacting to things that appear strange at first. And um, so that was kind of a key to the whole story and what really I think opened it up wider to a wider audience because now we have these two cultures that seem to clash at first, but then as you peel things away, you see actually how similar they are and how much in common they have. And uh, it, really, it really made for, an, I think, the most interesting part of the story is showing those two elements together so it's not just so one-sided. Yeah, well, it's just, you know, we, we wanted to show a lot of the similarities between uh, Mormonism and different Christian religions rather than the differences, which I think a lot of times that's what people focus on. And um, because I'm not a member of McLean is and we're married, then, um, you know, we're very sensitive to, to that subject. And we always um, are asked like, oh, isn't that, isn't that hard? Isn't that difficult for you guys? And our answer is no, because people don't realize all the similarities and, you know, just human stories are always the same. Like we want the same things and, you know, love and happiness and all that stuff. So it's, it's hard if you don't respect the other one. It's hard right. if you don't try to understand where they're coming from. But if you can really seek to know where the other side's coming from, then yeah, you can, you know. Yeah. And so work. this story of Lane, the, the main character in the Beehive, um, we wanted her to kind of stand for what for the differences, but then you know she learns that that we're all the similar. And so.
So exactly. yeah. Yeah, and the, and the girls learn a great deal from from her. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes as as a member of the church, as an active member of the Mormon Church, we kind of get this feeling that you know we're going on missions, we're doing all these things to help others. I think we feel like we have everything to teach and nothing to learn from other people, whereas some of the most Christ-like examples and some of the most unselfishness I've seen in people comes from Claire's family who was raised Catholic and have this deep love for the Savior and love for, Je you know, for Jesus God and the scriptures. Like I learned so much from them. So if we're not open to what other people can teach us, it, it can you know, cause a rift between people. So in that story, both, both sides kind of learn from each other and they're, they're better for it. No, I've never been to girls camp. Um, and when I first met McLean, he said, well, um, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I said, what's that? <laughs> and I mean, I, I assuming that I had met a Mormon before, but I really had grew up in an area that there's not many Mormons. So um, yeah, so it really was, that was seven years ago. So since then I've learned I mean, almost everything. And, and I'm really close with his family and all of his sisters who have all gone to girls' camp. So they would tell me stories and they taught me all the songs before. <laughs> um, so I've, I definitely got a feel for it. And the cast, what was really nice is the cast, there was a mixture of girls that were LDS and weren't. And we were all up there in the mountains shooting this film. And it really just like felt really special. And girls who had been to camp said, this is kind of what it feels like. like you're up in the mountains with these girls that come from different backgrounds and different places, but you're there and it's very special. And so, so in a way, I've never been to formal girls camp, but I feel like after filming this movie, it was a little, <laughs> a little portion of what it would be like. So, um, the reason is, is there's another character in the movie, her name is Phoebe, and uh, basically the, the way she gets, the way, the way Lane goes to camp is her, she loses her father, and a year later her mom is getting remarried, and the guy she marries is this Mormon guy, and she doesn't know anything about them, and she's really nervous about it. So, and then one, they tell her when they're going on their honeymoon, she has to go stay with her new step-cousins. And her new step cousin is this 12 year old beehive Mormon girl who is totally anxious. She has, she has a dog that's like her anxiety service animal and she does not want to go to camp and she's staying there with them and they're not expecting her to go to camp, but she kind of like takes pity on this new step cousin of her. And uh, she's, she says, Hey, if, will it help you if I go to camp with you? Like she kind of, the first real um, example of sacrifice is her saying, I, she doesn't want to go to camp, but she sees this young girl who is struggling and getting pressure from, from the leaders to go. And she's like, look, if I come with you, will that help? So she ends up staying and hanging out with the beehive. She, this girl's the only beehive. And so she says, look, I'll be a beehive for the week. And so, hence the title, Once I Was a Beehive, you know. She, it, it's one of those titles that some people, I don't know, once you see the movie, you really realize it's the perfect title. Some, you know, a lot of people have opinions on, well, why didn't you just call it Girls Camp, or why didn't you just call it this or that? And we said, well, we want this, we, we don't, we want people to know that there, this is more than, more than just a comedy. This is a coming of age um, really feel good story that's going to you know make you laugh but it's also going to make you think and it might make you cry and <laughs> even the guys that I, I, we uh, were at a screening last night and we had several grown men and young men uh, shedding tears and really really uh, kind of responding to this story and that's that's been one of the most amazing things is seeing how well guys have reacted to it and I think that's part of why I don't know. I mean, some people ask, why did you, like you said, why did you choose to do a female story? I think it was almost important to maybe have a guy's perspective on this story because I was able to see everything from a more objective um, view and say, you know, I think this is, these are important keys to the story. And then, and then when it comes out, 
that's why it is appealing to both guys and girls because there's this male perspective on it too, but also, you know, this huge female perspective. And it's like, it really is like a unifying movie and story. Yeah. And I mean, like females are the minority in the film industry. And it's funny because people keep saying, well, it's a girl story. It's a female story. I'm like, well, females go to guys stories, movies all the time, but you don't call it that. You just go to the movie and it's usually about a guy, right? <laughs> so it's it's been interesting. Like we've, we've seen people, you know, like a lot of guys not want to go see the film or resisting it. And then they'll write us or they'll write on their blog or even all the, most of the reviewers have been male and they'll say, I thought I was going to hate this movie, but I ended up loving it. And I think we want to change that. Like I think you shouldn't think just because you're going to see a female story, a female driven story, that you're not going to connect with it. So like both male and female have been connecting with the story. You know, that I chose to have the main character lose her father and, because I, I wanted her to be dealing with something. Um, a crisis of a, faith. A, a crisis of faith. It was to give her her crisis. You know, yeah. every hero has, every hero in a story has something that happens to them that makes them question who they are and what they believe. And so that was her, yeah. her crisis of faith. So. And it's it's a good, it was a good jumping off spot because it, it gives, it gives us a reason as to why she would be going to this camp. You know, it, a very, we, we didn't want this shoehorned kind of, we wanted an organic reason as to why she would go. And uh, so kind of it made sense like, oh, what, what oper in what um, reality would this non-member girl be going if she didn't know anybody? And so it, it made for like, oh, well, she's this fish out of water. She's mm -hmm. plugged into this. And then it also helps with her um, as she's looking back, you know, throughout she's kind of thinking back on her time with her father. And uh, the stories she, she's, she's helping the girls camp because she used to go camping with her father all the time. And so her constant memory is helping her as she's helping the girls. And then they're also helping w um, her deal with the grief. And so it just, it just adds some more layers to the overall film and it makes it feel more, more complete. And, um, and loss is something that most of us can, I mean, hopefully a lot of 16 year olds, you know, haven't lost their parent. I know a lot have, but you know, it's, it's like a human emotion that we all deal with at different times in our life. And it always makes us question what we believe. I think usually, you know, it, it can either make you stronger in your faith or it can make you move away from your faith for a time or, or lose hope. And so it just seemed like the right thing to do with that character to put her in that situation and have this poor girl who has to you know question everything yeah everything she believes at such a young age and but also such an important age you know I mean you're it's like that time in life when you're just everything's confusing <laughs> you yeah. know so <laughs> and w one thing that's been really kind of as as producers and the right as filmmakers that's been really gratifying is We've had so many people write on Facebook private messages and even public messages saying, you know, I lost my dad and not too long ago and, you know, this movie helped me realize that there's more out there and that, you know, like to hear somebody say that this movie has helped touch them and helped them deal with their own struggles or helped a friend deal with their own struggles, like that, that really means a lot. Yeah. Especially when it's coming from, we, we get a lot from people that aren't members of the church and saying, you know what, this has helped me understand my Mormon friends more. This has helped me, you know, understand the fact, hey, you guys are Christians like us. Like, the, you know, like little things like that that make it all worth it as a filmmaker to say, hey, it's not just something you forget about after an hour and a half at the movie theater. It's something people talk about and that is kind of making a difference for people and that, that's the best thing we could, we could ever hope for.